two common questions I often hear from aspiring founders are, one, how can I work full time for the nonprofit that I'm starting? And two, what is a reasonable salary that I can expect to make working full time for a nonprofit that I'm starting? These questions are totally understandable. For one, oftentimes when someone is starting a nonprofit, it's their dream to be able to do that work and help the community full time. It takes a lot of time and energy and can sometimes take a long time to get a nonprofit off the ground. And having someone working full time for the nonprofit has community benefit too. It's that whole thing about you get out what you put in. I know when I started my nonprofit, profit organization. I worked for quite a while on a volunteer basis and I love volunteering, but I definitely saw a greater return on investment when I was able to spend my full-time working hours on it. Within a year or two of my board hiring me as the full-time executive director, I saw our growth about triple. If we haven't met before, my name is Amber Melanie Smith and I make these videos here on YouTube to help aspiring change makers with tips and strategies to help you change the world and live a life of impact and purpose. There's this whole notion of a social return on investment when you're talking about nonprofits, which essentially means you should be okay spending what you need to spend in order to maximize the impact that you can have on the world. Because after all, having that impact on the world is why you want to start a nonprofit in the first place. Now in some of my past videos, I have talked about answers to that first question of how can someone work full time for the nonprofit that they're starting or if they're a board member and it's time for the organization to start thinking about having someone work full time, how do you do that? But in this video, I'm going to talk about that second question. What are the reasonable salaries you could expect to receive as a staff person of a nonprofit? Now, if you're the founder, most typically you're going to be moving into the executive director role, but there are other roles that you can do in a nonprofit as paid staff. And I'll touch on a little bit about how, you, how much you might make in those roles as well. Now, before I get into some numbers, I wanna talk about a couple of factors that could influence what the salary might be in a particular nonprofit organization. There are really about five things that can influence a salary. The first one is obvious and that is what is the role? What is the job title? The executive director tends to command the highest salary in a nonprofit, usually followed by someone who is in fundraising because they are generating money and it takes a high level of skill to be able to do that. So fund development or business roles might command high salaries in nonprofits as well, at least relative to the other staff roles. Surprisingly, the second thing is what type of nonprofit it is, meaning what, what type of cause is the nonprofit addressing? For example, animal uh, rescue organizations might have staff that are paid less than people working in an arts nonprofit. The third factor is also pretty common sense, and that is the annual budget size of the nonprofit organization. Obviously, a nonprofit with a $250,000 or less budget per year isn't going to be able to pay their executive director the same as a nonprofit that has an annual budget of $5 million per year. Fourth, the location of the nonprofit could play a role in what salary is, uh, at least here in the United States. Different states, different cities have different costs of living. So when a board of directors is deciding what a staff person's salary should be, they're often going to look at the cost of living in their own city and community. Fifth, Sadly, public perception about what a nonprofit staff person's salary should be could also influence what the salary ends up being. This is definitely something that I have talked about in past videos and I tend to get on a little bit of a soapbox about it, so bear with me. But basically for the past several years, probably a decade or two, the nonprofit sector has been combating this idea of the overhead myth which is public perception that nonprofits should not invest sufficiently in their overhead. And from the nonprofit, or from the public's point of view, rather, um, oftentimes staff is lumped into what is called overhead. So people might say, oh, I wanna donate to a charity, but I don't want it to go to staff. This harms the potential salaries that people working in nonprofits might be able to make. 
and it harms it quite a lot because nonprofits have now a very bad reputation for paying their own employees so poorly that they can lead to burnout, it can lead to high turnover, which also costs the nonprofit money, and it can lead to a general inability to attract talent to the nonprofit sector. And if we're gonna be solving problems like homelessness and climate change, we need the top minds, we need top talent coming into these nonprofits. No one's joining a nonprofit to get rich off of a nonprofit organization employee role. But it is reasonable to expect that people can feed their families and pay their bills working in this role. So all of that is to say, the nonprofit sector and several organizations in it have been combating this myth for years, and some of that is starting to take hold. The final thing I'll say about that is, if the nonprofit sector is unable to compensate its employees to the point where those employees are impoverished, then it is contributing to the very problems that it is trying to solve. So it's in everyone's best interest to make sure that employees get fair compensation and rant. Okay, so now that you know about the factors that influence what a salary could be in a nonprofit, it's time to get into some numbers, which you've all been waiting for. There are a couple of ways to find this information. You could look at online job sites and just search for nonprofit role X and just see what the salaries offered are. You could also look at other nonprofits job listings to see what they're offering um, if they state the salary on the job description, which they should. But uh, fortunately for us, there are some great resources out there that have compiled all the information for us. And the one I'm going to be referring to today is from GuideStar. Every year they issue an annual nonprofit compensation report based on compiling the data from thousands of nonprofits across the United States to see where everyone's averaging out across type of nonprofit, location, etc. GuideStar does have the full version of their report for sale on their website, but they also have a free downloadable sample. I'll actually leave the link to that in the description for this video, but that is the sample that I'm going to be referring to when I'm discussing this, uh, the salary amounts with you. Fun fact, if you ever want to know what the top paid employee of a particular nonprofit is making, you can go on GuideStar and search for that nonprofit's records and in their tax records each year, they're supposed to state the salary of their top executive. Okay, so first I'm going to be talking about the salaries for organizations with a budget of $250,000 per year or less. These are generally considered smaller organizations, and I'm going to be talking about the national averages of these organization salaries. So for executive directors, um, it, it says that the average salary for an organization of this size is going to be about $45,000, $46,000 per year. On the low end, we're looking at about $20,000 a year. Oof. And on the high end, you're probably going to see some folks maybe receiving seventy-five dollars or $76,000 per year. Now, when you're talking about some of the other positions that we talked about, so fund development, fundraising positions, we're looking at an average salary of around $36,000, $37,000 per year. And on the top end, sorry, one sec, on the top end, we're looking at fifty-four, fifty-five thousand. dollars $55,000. On the low end, we're looking at $18,000. Okay, so if you're in the United States, you know that that is below the poverty line. Um, I understand why an organization of this size would offer such a salary. Um, it, probably if they're this size, you know, obviously they're very small, but they might also be just starting out. And so investing in a fundraising position might be something they feel nervous about doing without before they can see the results. So. Gosh, that's rough though. And then just a couple more, you know, for marketing in an organization of this size, we're looking at an average of 30,000 and for the top program manager, so someone who's overseeing like the community work being done, um, if it's, let's say like a, a foster agency for animals, that's someone who's like overseeing the foster program for the animal adoptions, that kind of thing. Um, that role brings in around 36,000 on average. 
Okay, so comparing that to a slightly larger organization, this is for an organization with a budget uh, between $250,000 and $500,000 a year. So this is still considered a pretty small organization, but getting up there. So for the executive director, you do see a pretty big jump between uh, what you would see in the smaller organization and this. So the average for the ED in a this size organization is now $69,000 a year. On the low end, $32,000. And on the high end, we're looking at $110,000. Um, that's, that's a big difference. So you can see as the nonprofits grow, the ability to compensate their directors more fairly, more um, compared to market rates, uh, definitely gets a little bit better. On to the fundraising role in this size organization. The average is about 51,000. Um, still on the low end, $20,000 though. And on the high end, about $78,000, which is a much more of a livable wage for sure. You can take care of a family on that. Uh, in many places in the United States, I will qualify. And comparing some of those other roles, the marketing person in this uh, organization of this size is making a, an average of 40,000 and your uh, programs person is closer to like 50,000 a year. Now when you start to get into larger size organizations with at least a million dollars in their annual budget, you are talking about much more competitive salaries. So executive directors, fund development positions might be able to pull in $100,000 salaries at this point. But again, that could make a lot of sense. In the business world, they might be making two or three times that. But in the nonprofit world, where they have to do a lot of complex work to manage a larger size organization, that could be what's considered fair and competitive. <laughs> this report's really interesting um, because at a certain point in the report, they also break it down by gender, and that's when you can start to see some really interesting things. Uh, I'm looking at the, um, the average salaries for animal rescue organizations. Um, women might make an average of forty-two dollars or $43,000 as the executive director of a small uh, animal rescue. Men, however, on average are making about fifty dollars to $51,000. So I'm just gonna leave that there. So that offers you a pretty uh, light summary of some of the salary numbers you might expect to see in an organization that is starting or growing. Again, starting out, you're gonna have that smaller budget, most likely, unless you have some magical unicorn investor who's just handed you lots and lots of money, which is pretty rare um, in my experience. In summary, Yes, you can make a living working for a nonprofit. You're probably not going to get rich. And honestly, if you are trying to work in a nonprofit, that's probably not your goal, or at least it shouldn't be. Everyone I know who works in nonprofits does this because they have the heart to do it. Having the heart to do it and the passion for the cause, however, does not mean that you deserve to live in a state of poverty. You deserve to receive a living wage, to be uh, compensated fairly, and to be able to take care of your family. Wanting to help others does not preclude you from being able to afford your bills. And fairly compensating your staff as a nonprofit has an impact on the community. Whenever you have staff burn out, whenever you have staff leave the organization in search of something that will allow them to pay their bills, your organization is spending extra money and extra time catching up to hire someone new, bring in and train someone new, time that could have been spent serving your community. And when you invest in the talent and bring it into your organization to focus on these big issues we're trying to solve as the human race, you're going to see that these issues are going to be tackled competently and with skill and talent because you are willing to invest in someone's ability to solve them as a leader. If you are a founder or someone looking for a job in the nonprofit world, do your research. Check out a Fair Compensation. GuideStar, like I said, has some great resources. There are other resources online too. Search for other comparable, comparable positions to what you're looking to do in the nonprofit world. And know your worth and be able to share what you think is fair with your board of directors. Have a frank conversation with them and hopefully it'll work out. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this illuminated this issue for you and helped you think about some things. 
and uh, that you uh, got some use out of it. So if you did, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And final comment, if you are on Facebook, don't forget to join my group, Change the World or Bust. Myself and other change makers are in that group having good conversations about our own nonprofit and social enterprise and social impact journeys, and you might find some use joining our community. Hope to see you next time. Thanks.